Good morning and welcome to the video for third grade for module five, lesson one. This is Mr. Parks, the math teacher at Risen Christ Lutheran School. Um, today we are going to be working using the distributive property again. Uh, so hopefully if you watched the previous video to get an idea of what we were doing uh, with that uh, kind of towards the end of that video, it should be a good reminder. Um, if not, go ahead and take a look at that real quick, but we will cover some of the sync kinds of topics. We are going to be doing this so that we can work on multiplying by numbers uh, that are larger than 10. Uh, this is something that we'll have to do over the next few years. So um, to get started on the lesson, uh, we are going to use the distributive property and we are going to break this up. So we have a 10 by 10 um, block here and we have a 10 by 10 block uh, for the book, it probably should show a little bit more clearly um, than it does here, but imagine that we have a darker line here that breaks up our groups of 10. So we are going to place six rows of tiles with 20 in each row. And so to do that, uh, let me take my highlighter and zoom in just a tad. Uh, we could go ahead and shade in six rows. So here's my first row of 20 and I have 10 plus 10. And then second, third, and fourth. I'm trying to use my uh, mouse to do this is not the most precise thing ever. It's a lot easier to just do it with a pencil. And then the numbers we would be looking for, we're doing 10 plus 10. And then we are multiplying by six. So when we're done, we're essentially gonna break this up into doing six times 10 and writing that answer here for 60. And then we're gonna write the answer for six times 10 here, which is 60, and then add those together. That's what we're looking to do. Um, so how can you break apart the factor into multiples of 10? Uh, we would get uh, to show, uh, yeah, so 20 equals 10 plus 10. And then how many tiles are in each smaller rectangle? We would get 60. Why do you need to add those together? Well, if we don't add them together, we're not going to end up getting the correct answer at the end. Um, and then to give you an example of how this would look, we are doing uh, for this part, six times 10 plus 10. And then our next step would be to do six times 10 and then add that to the answer to the other group of six times 10. And then the third step, which I still have students that are getting really confused on this. So we're going to take our number that we wrote here inside the box, and that's going to go here. And then the number that we wrote in the right hand box is going to go here. But that's also the answer to the first group of six times 10 for the left side. Right side would be the second group of six times 10. And then we add those together. And then we would use 120 times. And to save time, I am not doing all of the underlining. I did mention in email um, that they are required to underline. So we would start by underlining uh, this part here and this part here. And then we need to underline this. And then we need to underline stuff from the directions to help us as well. Um, so I have students that are kind of skipping ahead on that part. Uh, which causes a little heartache when they get their paper back and figure out that they did something incorrectly um, because they forgot to underline part of the directions for the problem and then either got the wrong answer or left out um, parts of what they were being asked to do for the answer. Um, so for this one, we could go ahead and say that we're doing seven rows of tiles, 30 tiles in each row, and we want to know how many tiles we placed. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have a group of 10 plus 10 plus 10. And I'm going to try 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, so yeah, this would be our darker section here. And then we should have another one right underneath this one. So I'm usually going to recommend, if it doesn't show up dark enough in the book, um, to ask them to underline it uh, to be able to help with that. Uh, seeing where their their blocks uh, should go. And again, we're going to highlight. This time we're going to do seven rows. 
So one all the way across, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm just gonna kind of see how quickly and <laughs> neatly I can do this without confusing everyone. All right, so here's our seven rows of 10. And then our number seven would go out here. We're showing that we're gonna do seven times 10. I'm usually going to tell the students to write the answer inside the box, so we would get 70 for this one, 70 for this one, and 70 for this one. So a sum multiplied by a number, we can go ahead and do um, 7 times, and then 10 plus 10 plus 10. Um, and then how can we write it as the sum of three products? Uh, it would be this part right here, so 70, or actually, you know what, what they probably want for this is it's going to look like 7 times 10 plus 7 times 10 plus 7 times 10, and that would probably be the most accurate answer for that. Uh, sorry if my Steam notification is coming up on the video. I don't know if it does or not, but it, it's overlapping uh, the whiteboard app that I use. And then write the product as the sum of three numbers. Uh, we could do that as 70 plus 70 plus 70. And we would get 210 for the answer when we're done. Um, I am going to skip the one at the bottom uh, just for the sake of time. I am going to uh, say that this works very similarly to this. So part B, what I did is going to match what we did here, and then we can do something uh, like this. Now this one, it shows breaks, breaking it apart into multiples of 10. So we don't always have to use 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. I will say that we could do 20 plus 20 for this one. Or we could also do 10 plus 30. Um, so it doesn't always have to be even groups of 10. I think it helps, um, but if students want to try something different, that would be perfectly fine with me, as long as they get the right answer when they're done. All right, so one of the things that we'll be working with is for the homework, they're probably going to want to break this up and make sure that we do um, 3 times 20 is it the same as 3 times 10 times 10? So for instance, when we were doing this earlier, we were talking about it being um, 3 times 10 plus 3 times 10. So this might be a little bit different. And then you need to show, so again, explain using words, whether he's correct and why or why not, and then complete the area model so that you should show me the answer to 3 times 20 inside this, and we may have more squares than we actually need. So keep that in mind. Um, for this first example, we're probably going to be working with 3 times 10, and we're going to replicate that all the way across because we have the number 30 here. And then we need to add in each of our groups of 30. And once we do that, we can add them together to get the answer. We're going to do something similar with this, so we want to make sure that we break it up apart, uh, break it apart evenly. This one it has both of them blank. So again, we're looking for matches. Um, so that means we should probably have an eight here, and then whatever numbers, uh, probably tens, would go in here, and then we would work on that. I am going to skip number four just to save time. Um, for the homework, if I don't remember to do that, if you watch the video, that should hopefully be the reminder. I will try to remember, but this lesson will be, I believe, on Thursday. So I might forget as I'm recording this on Sunday. On the back, so um, I don't want students spending more than two minutes on any of these problems for the test prep. If set a timer, if it takes them two minutes, have them write their answer and we'll go on. They get to do corrections uh, for full value. Uh, for the homework assignments, I don't want students spending 10, 15 minutes trying to struggle with these um, because by the time they get to this point, they're a little tired. All right, so um, for each of these, we can use what we've worked on before. We wanna do um, 20 photos with four rows. We could draw a picture to help us with that. 
uh, we want to figure out what our missing number is here. So keep in mind what I've talked about earlier in the video. And then the same thing for this, we're doing something similar. Now, again, like I mentioned on that one example, if we have 10 and 10 and we're trying to get up to 40, we might need to do something different than 10. And then for this, use the array and the distributive property. They should be drawing a line. So for instance, one easy way that we could do this is to go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, and draw a line straight up and down better than I did with my mouse. And then we are going to find out what the amount is for this part here, which would be six times five, and this amount here, which would be six times two, uh, for instance. And then once we get here, the answer for this side would go on the left-hand side, the answer for this side would go on the right-hand side, add those together to get the final answer. So hopefully this has helped. I'm trying to keep it, uh, it looks like we've almost doubled uh, the length of the video, but part of that was because of extra things I had to talk about. So let me know if the homework part is helpful. If it's not, uh, I'll keep the videos right about five or six minutes, and then we'll just go ahead and save that extra time. Uh, and then if you have any questions on the homework, um, parents, you can just send me an email or shoot me a text um, for my Risen Christ students. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me again by either of those means. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.